My name's Dave Ford at Cusacks. We're in our North London depot at Enfield to introduce our new innovation, streetworks.info. The project started 24 months ago with the Thames Water Traffic Management Framework Agreements. We had an open days here for the Guide Dog Association who helped us choose the barrier and design the foot for the new barrier. We've also developed a new lamp to keep the top of the barriers clear. Since then, we've incorporated Sightline and further functions for the general public to be informed of what's happening with the works. So we're here in um, Cusack's yard on this very realistic simulation of a footway and a footway closure and temporary footway in the road situation. The, these pallets are standing in for the footway. And um, I'm gonna talk to you about how to set the system up. So, first thing is, barriers are set up. We've got the barriers around the excavation and we've got the barriers on the other side that are separating the temporary footway from the road. The barriers are all arranged with the tactile yellow and black strip on the side that the pedestrians are supposed to be on. So on this side, the yellow and black strip is on the outside and the red and white strip is on the inside, on the excavation side. But on the other side, on the side between the pedestrians and the traffic, the red and white strip is facing the traffic and the yellow and black tactile strip is facing the pedestrians. I'm now going to put on these two tactile arrow signs. So these arrow signs, because this is a diversion, they have arrows on because they're telling, they're telling blind and partially sighted people that they're supposed to go around this rather than the footways closed and they should turn around. And these signs also contain the beacon that's used for the digital part of the system. So the sign slides over the barrier and uh, we take some cable ties. So the cable ties hold the sign in position, prevent it being stolen, and the sign can be made to fit any barrier system. So now we're going to put the other sign at the other end of the streetworks. So we're at the other end of the site where the site would rejoin with the building line, and this is where we're going to put the other sign, pointing in the other direction. So we've now got an arrow sign at both ends of the works one at the start from this end, one at the end. We've got a line of tactile dots leading between the two arrow signs. We've got an indication of which side of the barriers pedestrians are supposed to be on with both the tactile dots and the black and yellow. So wherever you see black and yellow, that's the side you're supposed to be on. Wherever you see red and white, whether that's inside the excavation or on the traffic side, that's the side you're not supposed to be on. By providing um, the same information in tactile form with the arrow and the dots and in high contrast visual form with the um, yellow and black and the red and white, we're trying to capture the needs of as many people as possible, both blind and partially sighted people with different degrees of usable vision and members of the general public. With the physical elements of the site now set up, it's time uh, to do the digital registration. So we open the Streetworks Log app and add a new site. The first thing we need to do is to choose the site layout. Is it no footway obstruction? Is it a partial footway obstruction? Is it a partial footway obstruction with a temporary footway in the road? Or is the footway closed? This is a temporary footway in the road situation. The next thing it asks us to do is to scan the right code. So hit scan, point the phone at the code on the right side, and it's done. It's now asking us to scan the left code. So we have to go to the other end of the site. The reason that we make the operatives do this is to ensure that the GPS coordinates that are recorded by the phone are actually of the start and the end of the site. So we're at the other end of the site and we're going to scan the left code. Um, now we choose the site length, uh, 0 to 5 meters, 5 to 10 meters, 10 to 20 meters or 20 meters plus. If you choose 20 meters plus, it uses the GPS coordinates to work out the length of the site. Lower than 20 metres, the operative's estimate is more accurate. This is a 5 to 10 metre site. 
Then we choose uh, how long we're going to be here. What's the end date? So let's say we're going to be here for three days. Finally, uh, we choose what kind of works we're setting up. So we've imported the entire Thames Water information sign catalog into the app and uh, arranged them based on the types of works that are going on. So say this is a clean water work and we're laying a brand new pipe. So we pick that and this is the information that's going to be served to the general public. Branded Thames Water information sign information. All of the parameters for this, the categories, the types of signs, the copy on the signs, can all be determined by the Thames Water admin on the system. So Thames Water or whoever, whichever utility is carrying out the works, their communication people could control this and can control the options that are provided to their operatives out in the field. Th we can input the works reference here uh, if we want to track our permit numbers and um, we can also put in other configuration information that might be helpful to um, disabled people. For example, if there were entrances throughout the site, we might log them. If there was a bus stop that had been moved, all of that information can be put into this free text field and is served to disabled people that are using the site right now. We now get a summary of uh, what we've put in and if we hit save that's all logged into the system and now we get a preview of the information sign that it's going to display. Okay when leaving home the first thing I'd need to do would be launch the Sightline app on my iPhone. Double tapping on the particular app which is Sightline, it's now opening it I hope and I'm listening through my earpiece. Sightline, roadworks ahead. Diversion I'm now getting instructions right. about a diversion to my right meters. using Rest my white stick. I've hit a barrier. Feel out and I can feel that there are directional bumpers here. I've now picked an arrow which is showing me the direction in which to go. And it's now know it's going around a corner and I've got a ramp here. And I'm now running quite smoothly along following the line of dots, directional dots here. I've detected that there's the ramp here which will lead me back onto the pavement and I anticipate it's going to be to the left. And I've got back to the uh, arrow sign here which I know I've reached the end of this diversion. If we've closed the footpath, we don't use the arrow sign we use this sign with a tactile cross on it. So this tells people that the footpath is closed and rather than diverting around the street works, they should look for somewhere safe to cross the road to use the other footway. The registration process is the same as for a diversion, except in this case, when we add a new site and we say footway closed, it asks us to, sign, to scan the um, cross signs, which we do, the first and the second. Then it asks us to scan the signs on the um, advanced warning footpath closed signs, which should be uh, giving advanced warning either side of the works. So we go and scan the codes on those sides. Then, um, as before, we select the site length, the end date, and again, the types of works for the information sign. So now, the Sightline app will serve the notification of the works site when the blind and partially sighted person comes close to this advanced warning sign, as well as when they come close to the sign on the actual works. Sightline. I've just received Footway notification on my iPhone app for sight lines as a footpath closure ahead. I can now feel the uh, some form of a warning sign there. Yeah. 
I'm now going ahead using my white stick, Sightline. looking or waiting until Subway I actually closure. touch Five something. To this site will be here for three days. I've now hit a sign of some sort and I can feel there's a cross which is telling me that the footpath is closed and I've got to look for a safe alternative. So, if a member of the public approaches the work site, the likelihood is initially they wouldn't have the app installed. And so, for them to find out what's going on here, they see this information that says to find out what's happening here, please visit streetworks.info and enter this number. So, if they put in streetworks.info, they get this, um, sign, uh, this uh, site. They're prompted to download the app, um, but if they don't want to, all they have to do is to put in the number that's printed on the site. So here it's four, three, three, four, eight, eight. They hit submit and they're served with the information for this site that we just created. And if they press more info, they're referred to the utilities website and you can point the uh, users to anywhere on your website you want and that can be different for the different types of work that are being carried out. If they have the app installed, the Streetworks app, this uh, information is served automatically. Finally, if they have a QR reader installed, they can launch that, scan the QR code, and again, they're referred directly to the branded information.